monsieur. Saying stuff in French that was perfectly fine in English. There are six cars in the parking lot, but the inside is packed with spectators. This opening circus song is telling and showing us everything we're going to supposedly see in the rest of the circus. It's like the beginning of a Mission Impossible movie. Also, it's welcome, welcome chorus, and then listing off positive qualities of this place is giving me massive BR guest vibes, which is weird, because the co-director here, Tony Bancroft, directed Mulan, not Beauty and the Beast. Signing autographs in the middle of the opening number. And that's me! Is the clown narrator watching the movie? Also, Danny DeVito plays a character involved in a circus cliche. Hops. You will give a job. What? We would no, if we could. The last thing we need a more mouth to Which pee. is to say... The budget constraints of a circus are very real, but the power of boners will always turn you into an expert accountant so you can hire a hot chick. Less than five minutes in and we're already on our second song-based montage. That's not a good sign. Tell ya, and I have something exciting to tell ya. Holy sh they kiss once and now they're getting married? Man, if that were all it took, I would have married all eight of my college girlfriends and two of their sisters. What? I think I've said too much. Look at this goddamn wedding dress. I mean, yeah, it's the 60s, but holy sh**, that's more revealing than most bathing suits at the time. I'm not trying to slut shame or whatever you would call it. Flaunt it if you got it, just at your wedding? Esmeralda has gifty for newlyweds. Uh, gifty? From Himalayas. I hate it when Esmeralda refers to her boobs as the Himalayas. Also, what's really gonna bake your noodle is when I tell you this movie isn't even about any of these people. The Simpsons! Bob's nephew Owen. Wait, was there a third brother? We know Horatio doesn't have kids. Why can't this just be Bob's son? He looks just like him. This nephew thing is weird, man. I'm Zoe. <laughs> I'm Owen. <laughs> man, this meat cute is so meat cute that I'm about to meet vomit. And as time passed, it turns out Bob and Talia weren't the only ones to fall in love at the circus. And now it's time to introduce you to Owen's nephew, Jack. Jack fell in love with Penelope. They grew up and had a nephew by the name of Colin. Colin fell in love with Diane, nephew Steve. These relationships blossomed during the 13-year period that the mysterious unnamed brother killer was in operation. Will you marry me? Jesus, what a cheap bastard. But I guess that's exactly what three months' salary at the circus will get you. Zoe comes from a respectable family. Romeo and Julietting the circus. Why don't you come to work for me? So, Owen will, he'll go to work for his girlfriend's dad at the Dog Biscuit Factory just to not have his relationship broken up by the father? And to let his wife continue circusing for fun? The motives here are murky. What the f***? How can a human decide what a dog will eat? I imagine even the most delicious dog biscuits taste like an owl's ass. There are only five kinds of biscuits. Ones with too much Tabasco, ones that taste like deviled eggs, ones with too much mayonnaise, correct biscuits, and those with a mystery taste with mystery spelled wrong. No one will be seated during the Wallace and Gromit portion of the movie. We should make treats that taste like people food. Overthinking dogs. How can you make biscuits that have too much mayonnaise but not make a biscuit that tastes like a hamburger? Brock, what are you doing here? <laughs> so is Patrick Warburton only voicing characters named Brock now? Because I'm pretty sure that was his character's name in Venture Brothers. So Brock is evil because he re-messes up the controls on the machine, but he also T-1000s himself away from and back to the group, and no one notices. Ah, sudden old Horatio, who I only knew was Horatio because of the subtitles. So these are the animal crackers that turn humans back to normal, and they're about to burn in a fire. Unbeknownst to everyone, Bob and Talia are currently a dog and a cat and they won't be able to change back once the cookies are destroyed. But why are they a dog and a cat right now? Does the big finale of their famous circus show involve them turning into a dog and a cat? Even if that's true, why don't they have the human animal crackers in the show tent? Don't the customers want to see them change back? Isn't that the prestige of their magic trick? I have so many questions about why they are a dog and a cat right now. Damn, I told those assholes not to use gas lanterns to light up their trailer. It's like the 21st century, I think. Also, what year is this set in? At the beginning of the movie, we saw it was set in the early 1960s. Bob and Talia got married then, and then suddenly Owen appears as the their young nephew. We've already talked about the weirdness of the third brother, but it stands to reason that Owen and Zoe were born in the late 60s or early 70s. Even if they got married in the 90s and seven years go by, we're about to see a high-def TV and a smartphone. I'm just saying this movie's timeline appears to be 10 years off, but it's set in the modern day. Quickly! Lazy little Lilliputian! That's Lilliputianist. There was a fire at the circus. My Uncle Bob and Aunt Talia, they're... they're gone. Forensic fire specialists are notoriously awful in this town, though. They didn't notice any burned bodies, so they declared my aunt and uncle dead for no reason. Me, as he, and Colin. Wait, does Owen's phone ring like a call when he gets texts? Also, how the f*** does Binkley not know that Owen's aunt and uncle died? She's giving him cookie updates during his mourning period? Gretchen, who paid for your electrolysis when your days as the bearded lady were sadly over? This is It's a Wonderful Circus Life. Bulletman! Bulletman is Groot. My blood. My brother stole from me. I love Ian McKellen and his voice work here, but every time he talks, I want to break out the judge's lyrics and Pink Floyd the Wall. The way you made them suffer, your 
exquisite wife and mother fills me with an urge to defecate! The zucchini scours the room looking for an adversary worthy of his deadly skills. What the f***? This descended into an all-out brawl instantly. Remember, this is a funeral! Hey, old Blue, what, what do you have here? Okay, let's get real about the dog and the cat here. It's strange enough that a guy like Owen, who spent his whole life around the circus before getting the dead-end dog biscuit factory job, doesn't know the secret of the animal crackers. Even if he doesn't, that means Bob and Talia walk around like a dog and cat so much that they're like that old Asian magician in The Prestige that pretends to be weak even when no one's looking. Did anyone wonder why Bob and Talia and the dog and cat weren't ever around each other? Here's some animal crackers that may cause some serious problems if you don't know how to use them correctly. Anyway, bye. Hmm, a mysterious package. The zucchini is intrigued. How the hell is zucchini witnessing this when he was trapped underneath that giant lady a mere seconds ago? Think about how much this movie could have been solved with a simple video camera in this room. I remember you drawing that. I remember you showing yeah. me that. I remember you watching the road. Oh, look, there's a fruit stand. Where the f*** are they? The early part of this movie told us where the circus was any chance it could get. San Jose, Cleveland, Franklin, Tennessee. We got constant updates. Now I don't even know where Owen and Zoe live or where they had to drive to the circus funeral and why they aren't in a place where there's a gas station nearby when their kid is hungry. Fruit stand. Fruit stand. Who? Fruit stand. But he keeps finding ways to get in here no matter what I do. You mean even when you keep the doors wide open while you're working? Devious. I nincom. <laughs> Eating an animal cracker turns you into the animal that cracker represents? That's a clever idea! One cent off for originality! The director said, Let's have your character eat one bite of two apples and throw them away immediately. It'll make her look like even more of an asshole. I was eating the one shaped like a... Hamster. This is the fattest f***ing hamster I ever saw. This is a goddamn guinea pig. I don't even know what hamsters eat. His brain goes immediately to, I'm gonna be like this forever, instead of even pausing for a bit at, how can I undo this? If the dog and cat could write this legibly on the back of Owen's old picture, why didn't they just find a fresh sheet of paper to write the note and avoid the potential confusion? Who would have thought to look on the back of this picture? I'm you! Ah, gosh! I really need to fix these potholes. Okay, so the movie is saying she felt the running over of the body, but dismissed it as potholes. But that happened in the grass. Potholes are on the road. Gah! Madness! Also, trees don't grow like this naturally, so the city or county is wasting a ton of money on unnecessary tree pruning. Crackers! Roll credits! But this is a house that's being carried by a truck on the highway, right? So how the f*** is this guy taking a shower in a house not hooked up to water? And why would you take a shower in the house while it's being moved? Cactus? Okay, who has a cactus room in their house? Zucchini would be amazing at CinemaSins. Are manure farms a thing? If you have a cow farm, don't you already have a manure farm? Or is this guy having manure trucked in from all over and he just sells manure, but also happens to have a few cows, and somehow he decided to call this a manure farm instead of a manure market, since you don't grow manure. Looks like someone started snacking early. When we last left the performers, they were in a massive fight with Horatio and his goons. What happened? The fight wasn't over, and the henchmen were winning for the most part. Now, 15 minutes later, it's like it never happened. Always hard to find. Like love, Waldo, a good Chinese restaurant. Good Chinese restaurants are everywhere if you know how to look for them. First step, avoid P.F. Chang's. It's magic. Magic. Your Uncle Horatio will stop at nothing to get his greedy hands on. That's true, but it's not like you know that Horatio has any idea about the animal crackers. The only reason Horatio does know is because Zucchini found out about them five minutes ago. Here's a musical number about what might have been for Horatio, and it feels kind of super not necessary. We already get his motivation. He feels wrong. Singing only makes it worse. Not unlike Vin Diesel. Horatio says he has multiple PhDs. And of course, he could be lying, but first off, why lie about that in song? And second off, if it's true, why did you get multiple PhDs on your way to being a circus performer? I'm surprised Horatio isn't singing I Just Can't Wait to Be King on top of these animals. Now fly, you fool. Scene does not contain a Balrog. Retractable circus. A bicycle towing the whole damn thing? Yeah, no. Cute, but no. I wish Uncle Bob and Aunt Talia were here. I know. They are, in a sense, kids. In a sense. Seeing as how Chesterfield knows the ins and outs of the magic animal crackers, doesn't he know that Bob and Talia are a dog and a cat right now? Everything that was special about this circus is gone. He says to all the circus workers, Owen is a really ignorant non-room reading jerk. This movie has more montages than Rocky IV, which is weird because both movies star Stallone. Still can't believe she would throw her life away when she could be with... Look, if Zoe can just leave her father's company to run the circus, I don't know why Owen can't. I'm guessing the answer would be money, but no one's ever mentioned that. Okay, what if we try up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, be a start? Taking the Konami code in vain. Did she leave him a TV dinner? That's cold. But the TV dinner probably isn't still cold, which means the heating instructions might be off a bit and this could actually kill him. But not really, probably. But still, maybe. 
but nah. But still, the movie gives me terrible flashbacks of Brave, or Brother Bear, or any movie where a human turns into a bear and learns life lessons and I'm scared. Of what? Global economic collapse. You did this? Well, I... I had a little help. From me. Kids who steal credit for other people's work. What they want is what they got before. Buffalo Bob's amazing animals. Seems like this would have been discussed before the grand reopening. And since Zoe was a kid who loved this circus and knows about the magic animal crackers, why wasn't that the focus? The crowd at the circus starts chanting animals because they're bored with clowns and a dude getting shot out of a cannon. It's like they read the script or something. I'm supposed to land in that? It's a fishbowl, so no. But also, can the crowd not hear him loudly speaking English? So <laughs> Attempted murder. If I saw a horse pushed off a ledge who then turned into a fish slightly before landing in a fishbowl, I would call the f***ing cops, man. I would not stand and applaud. If I went to a circus and saw a lion playing the guitar, I would demand my money back. That's either a man inside a lion suit, or you have torture trained that lion so hard it's inhumane. Big game cats cannot play the guitar, period. Let alone do a righteous solo. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience. This montage where the circus finds its footing with a world-class magical animal show set to Queens Don't Stop Me Now is the best part of this movie. And Zoe, none of this could have happened without you. Premature celebration. I'm wondering, does this dog biscuit factory only have Mr. Woodley and three employees running it? Zoe's just 10 minutes away. You can visit her anytime. That's another thing. Early on, the movie showed us that the circus moved from town to town. Now it seems like it's stationary, sitting in the same plot of land year round. Is that how circuses work? Cookies! Why the f does Owen have the cookies at the factory, especially on the day that he was just going to say he quit? How the hell has Binkley not figured out how to lock this door yet? How did the biscuit oven set his blue butt on fire, but not the wooden box of crackers? Cookies that turn you into animals. Hmm. <laughs> right, she can't even get the biscuits to taste like cheeseburgers. Now she thinks she can make them turn a person into an animal? I should never have let my little Zoe marry that circus freak. Rage golfing. Look. The box keeps adding new animals, but not new human cookies. You'd think that since the animal crackers were, you know, magic, they'd be able to replenish the human cookies too if you lost one. I know, I know. It seems like a plot device. You can't expect me to keep up with all this on the day I quit my job. Cooking two eggs and a bacon just so you can get a smiley face in the pan. Man, this movie loves its some musical montages. I'm just gonna add five cents now to cover any we might encounter in the future. Watching this montage, I don't understand why they need Chesterfield to pick out animals for Owen to try out. Can't they just do that on their own? I simply want what was rightfully mine. The fame, the fortune, the circus. Does he not realize what the modern day circus industry looks like? There's no fame. No one has posters on their walls of particular circus ringleaders or owners. No one has a fortune. Most circus companies went out of business or consolidated. Also, why doesn't Owen, who is currently a f***ing silverback gorilla, just punch this old bastard and take the cracker back, Jack? Because I'll be a gorilla, or a horse, or a rhinoceros, or whatever filthy beast I have to be to keep my family together. And hopefully my wife is into some really weird sex. How did Bullet Man know where to aim? Even if he somehow knew what was going on, he couldn't have been able to see where Horatio was. Since the entire circus staff ate crackers, there's gotta be like three dozen human cookies in that box right now, right? Hope everyone eventually gets the correct one. Horatio! Brother! Stop this! For reasons totally unknown, Bob waits until Horatio turns into a chimera to reveal he and Talia's secret. No! No. Well, someone saw Lord of the Rings. Did this movie just turn into Monsters, Inc.? This is a lot more Lion King than I think the movie intended, especially since the co-director here, Tony Bancroft, directed Mulan, and not The Lion King. Monkey Mackenzie is able to escape a bad guy for a really long time, considering she's just a toddler that still requires a f***ing child seat when riding in the car. By the way, are customers watching this? I think they are. Can't we see them all being amazed at this show? Yes, indeed, there was a crowd watching this. Too bad they're gonna tell their friends and family about a show that Owen and crew can never replicate again. Tis better! To have loved and lost. I liked it better when he only said Bullet Man. Uh, wh what went on sale? Remember those dog biscuits that turned our skin crazy colors? How the f*** did Zoe not know about the untested, likely FDA unapproved dog biscuits that they're selling to minors in this circus? Crinkly found a way to turn those failed experiments into a new business venture! So even after getting the people food dog biscuit thing right at least once, and knowing that Brock was sabotaging you, you just gave up on that? Also, do we even know what happened to Brock? The last we saw, he was still a mandrel. Did he get changed back? Is he... is he dead? Ha <laughs> ha! We're gonna be rich! 
partner. The fact that they're selling these face-altering cookies to kids makes me think that they will indeed make a lot of money on this. But, much like Steve Martin and the Jerk, something's going to happen where Carl Reiner calls a press conference, shows the ill effects of the cookies, and tells people that this product wasn't even tested on prisoners. Then they're going to lose it all. So look, we've talked to Scott Saba twice on our podcast, and <laughs> it wasn't easy to send a movie we've been cheering on to get released through all its trials and tribulations. So, I think he deserves a good five cents off here. I really don't think that the animal cracker qualifies as a cracker. Why? Well, because it's sweet, which to me suggests cookie, and me putting cheese on something is sort of the defining characteristic of what makes a cracker a cracker. Did you know that we create monthly exclusive videos for our Sin Club members? Bonus outtakes. I don't know, Peter. Meth is a hell of a drug. Extra Sins videos. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. And even member chosen sin commentaries. I love this. I love this this kind of uh, of a sin because it's just it's so silly. Pick our next video and see the exclusives at patreoncom cinemasins or click the link in the description below. Spider-Man is not a parade. You do not need to stop traffic for Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Perfect lips and dreamy eyes. Laser rocket arm. Ninkum poopy? Actually, yeah. Are you gonna say you're ninkum poopy? Because that's what you are, you ninkum poop! You lollygag the ball around the envy. You lollygag your way down to first. Do you know what that makes you? Larry! Lollygag! So it's in the box. Who's in the box? Because I'm gonna get that son of a bitch. I'm surrounded by nincompoops. And I'm surrounded by assholes. We make people happy. Oh, look at me. I'm making people happy. I'm the magical man from Happy Land in a gumdrop house at Lollipop Lane. Now sit your butt what? in that chair and listen up. Well, yeah, no, I don't like confrontations. King Kong ain't got s*** on me. I hold it true whate'er befall. During this fight, I've seen a lot of changing. The way you felt about me and the way I felt about you. But if I can change and you can change, everybody can change. Thank you, Mr. Minister.